Here we are in Caesarea. Here is the amphitheater, a Roman amphitheater. And here you see they have a lot of different concerts that are still going on to this day where they're setting up. They have big audiences fill these seats and watch music and enjoy different concerts. But in olden times, back in the times of history of the Bible, in the Bible times, this is the area where Paul had to come before the king, King Agrippa. Why did he have to appear before King Agrippa? We see in the Bible, in the New Testament, in Acts chapter 23, we see he had to approach the king because he had preached the gospel and he was arrested for preaching the gospel. He was put in chains and then later, while he was in prison, his nephew heard that they were planning, 40 men were planning to get ready to murder Paul. So his nephew let Paul know. He warned him, they're planning to kill you. Be careful. Be careful. They're really planning to kill you. So Paul was aware of that. And then he let the authorities know of these plans. And then he traveled and appeared before Felix and then Festus, and then, finally, before King Agrippa. Wow, here is the place, the exact place that he appeared before King Agrippa. Paul was always thinking about people, that they needed to know Jesus. So Paul used his authority, and he said, I have rights. As a Roman citizen, go ahead and send me to Rome. He was sent to Rome because this was a good opportunity for him to share the gospel and for the gospel to go all over the world. And now we know Jesus too. We see, as we study the life of Paul, we see that he had many struggles, many hard times. He was shipwrecked. He was imprisoned. He was. He had all kinds of challenges with uh, chains upon him, but he continued to share his faith, to share his faith in Jesus Christ. He continued to share the love of Jesus. Wow, that's so good. It should really impress us as we look at his example, the example of Paul. He continued on in faith, and he shared Jesus. It didn't matter what happened, if he was imprisoned, if he had any kind of struggle, if he was shipwrecked, if his life went up and down, it didn't matter. He persisted and came before the Lord. He trusted in Jesus. I challenge you to remember Paul, remember his example, and his life was surrendered to Jesus. I challenge you and myself that we need to surrender our lives to Jesus. We need to go ahead and just give up our lives for Jesus and tell others, just like Paul did, tell people about Jesus. Here is the place where King Agrippa sat. And he made his judgments from here. This is the place that King Agrippa actually sat when Paul was brought before him. Wow. You see, the king, King Agrippa, really was listening to Paul and paying attention to Paul's message that he almost wanted to accept Jesus. 
But King Agrippa said, no, uh, I can't make that decision to follow Jesus. You see, King Agrippa sent Paul to Rome because Paul asked to be sent to Rome. To see the king. King Agrippa knew that really Paul was innocent. He wasn't guilty. Wow. Paul really influenced so many people, even you and I, because in Rome he was able to share the gospel of Jesus Christ and let it be known to many. Here in Caesarea, this amphitheater here, we see the crowds. So many people sat here in these seats. And it really hits me, the story about King Herod Agrippa I. That king one day came here, and he came to speak. We don't know where, but when that king came into this arena, the crowds were just full, and the people were so shocked, and they were going, Oh, praise you, king! Praise you, king! And they were screaming and crying out, Oh, it's not a man! This is not a man! This king, he is a god! He is like God! And they cried out. And the king, he didn't say, oh, no, I'm not a god. The king enjoyed all of the attention. The king enjoyed all of the praise. He enjoyed it so much. He was, thank you, thank you. He accepted the praise. He didn't say, no, I'm just a man. I'm a king. I'm, I'm not God. He didn't say that. He went ahead and accepted that praise. And then the Bible says that that king, in Acts chapter 12, that King Herod Agrippa was struck with worms, and the worms began to eat him all over his body. And that king died. Wow. We don't know how it happened, how the worms ate him, but we know that truly the worms ate his body throughout his whole body and he died. And there's another man whose name is Josephus. He was a historian that said that the king went to his home and had the problem with worms and then he died Four years later, he suffered for four years with agonizing pain. But the Bible says that it hit him and he died immediately. How immediate did he die? We don't know for sure, but we know that the Bible is truth. And we know that King Herod was eaten by worms. You and I need to be careful to not accept praise for ourselves. We don't need to accept praise. We need to only praise God alone. All praise needs to be given to God, not accept any of the praise and be filled with pride and boasting. Our praise needs to be given to God. Give praise to God and God alone. Praise Him. Glorify Him. Glory be to God.